episode number 120 of the Lions Podcast. My name is Matt Brown, joined each and every week by Brett Colson and Brad Allen as we run down all the big news, all the big happenings, all the big bets that are going down in this crazy gambling industry. Guys, we're at the Lions US on Twitter, Play Picks US on Twitter. If you want to follow me at Matt Brown M2, Brett is at Brett Colson and Brad is at Brad Allen NFL. We are going to jump right into this slate. It is a full, full, full slate. So we don't want to waste any of your time here beating around the bush. So let's go ahead and get into everything here real quickly. If you did tail us um, on Thursday night, we got a little bit lucky on the over. I uh, got a little bit lucky there. I do feel like we got a little lucky, but that is perfectly fine. The tickets all cash the same. The money spends the same, whether we got lucky or not. Um, Brad, big takeaways at all for you from, from the game on Thursday night? Um, I mean, one of them is just how bad Bill O'Brien is. Like, you know, they're down 24-7. They're rushing the ball for trying to, trying to pick up four yards at a pop and not, you know, punting away on fourth down. And I, I was trying to work out what was going on this morning, and someone said to me, well, maybe he's just scared of his job. And they're like, maybe he's scared of giving up 51 and getting blown out again. But, like, you know, we, we discussed it. Wednesday or whenever it was, they had cornerback injuries. You've got this team of speedsters on the outside. Just chuck the ball downfield. You've got, you know, you've got that. Stop trying to pick up four yards of pop. And I guess it was played keep away from the homes. But, you know, when you're down 24-7, that, that's got to go out the window and you, you've got to start chucking it away. And you seem to play safe to me. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. That was one of my big takeaways. We have, Brett and I have never been a fan of old Bob here on the show at all. And I'm, it looks like that's going to continue Again, this season, Brett, any big takeaways from you from the game on Thursday night? That was it. Where were the explosive mm-hmm. pass attempts downfield? You have all that speed, all those weapons. Why aren't you making use of them in the first half? I just, the dump offs to David Johnson, Duke Johnson. I just, I don't get it. Um, so that was it. I admittedly only watched like the first 10 minutes of the game. I don't watch Thursday night football. I watched the condensed version on Friday. So I'll have to dive into it a little more today. But yeah, that was that was my immediately ta- immediate takeaway is what are the Texans doing on offense in the first half? Yeah, I think the biggest takeaway for me, too, is there's this narrative going around out there that, you know, all the defenses are definitely going to be ahead of the offenses. And, uh, you know, there hadn't been enough time. There hadn't been. Enough- well, one of the things that we pointed out on the pod on Wednesday, and I think this will be something that we'll talk about a little bit further as we kind of move into the big slate here is just the fact that the Chiefs returned 20 of 22 starters. This was the same offense. This was the same coach. This was the same scheme. This was the same everything. And so I think that you can try and paint this broad brush that you think that the defense is going to be ahead of the offenses. But when there's as much continuity on a team, and there's only a handful of teams that have kind of something sort of what the Chiefs have, but when you have as much continuity as they had, they did not look rusty at all they looked like a fine oiled machine the entire game moving up and down the field I mean a couple of errant throws from Mahomes here and there but uh by and large it did not look like this team that was all clunky or rusty or any kind of anything like that and so uh continuity I do believe is going to be pretty pretty big thing here as we move into week one of the NFL and let's just kick things off with one of those teams that I think that we'll probably look at from that angle here in this Bucks and Saints game. So the Bucks, the much ballyhooed Bucks here, are going to be heading to the Superdome to take on the Saints. As we look over here at DraftKings, this thing is sitting at three and a half right now, a total of 48. Brad, um, I don't know how much you're buying into the Bucks here. Of course, they bring in Brady, they pull Gronk out of retirement just this week. They signed Leonard Fournette in that backfield. Right there, I it's kind of hard to poke holes in the offense unless you believe that Brady is completely washed with all the playmakers they have. But are you buying into everything that's going on with this with this Bucks team? Um, I'm not really. No. So I mean, I, it, it doesn't seem like a natural fit to me. Um, you know, we, we know about Brady. He was like 32nd in in the NFL in throwing downfield last year, and we know that that's what Arians wants to do. Um, we know that. Arians quarterbacks, especially in the first year of the scheme, you know, there was a great piece uh, earlier this year that went through all of the quarterbacks the first year they played in Arian scheme, and they averaged about 45 sacks. Um, and Brady kind of averages, I think he took 25 last year. So the, the scheme, and, you know, they, they've said in camp that it's Brady adapting to Arians rather than the other way around. So I've, it, to me, if you're going to ask your quarterback to stand there behind an average offensive line, especially in this game, because the, the offensive line probably doesn't match up well, he's going to get hit a lot. 
Um, you ask him to throw downfield a lot, which is not really what he's done in his career since he had Randy Moss. It's not what he's done in the last five years or so. Um, so, and, and then now we've got Mike Evans with a with a gammy hammy. We don't know if he's going to go. He's going to be a game time decision by the looks of it. Um, so to me, I'm, I, I have a fair few questions about how, how effective the back will be. And again, there's no continuity. If you, you know, it's going to have Gronk in there. We, we don't know what Gronk looked like. He, he was partying in Miami for a year, lost <laughs> all this weight, gained it all back. But you, you don't know what that does to a body as well. So to me, there's a, there's a lot of questions about the Bucks offense. Three and a half at FanDuel, three and a half at uh, BetMGM as well, Brett. There is a little bit of discrepancy in the total where we are looking at a 48 flat over at DraftKings. Then you get to 47 and a half at FanDuel. You get to 48 and a half over at BetMGM. So again, we always say take advantage of having multiple accounts here, especially if you're betting these numbers because, I mean, we saw this play out even in the Thursday night game. If you got the worst of the number, you've lost on the total. If you got the best of the number, you won. So these little half points, these full points that you can get at the various books definitely plays out. So uh, take advantage of that as you go at it. Brad, one of the teams, Uh, that does have continuity is this Saints team. They're coming back pretty much intact here. You do add an Emmanuel Sanders into the mix there, which you would think could only help because there hasn't been that really big-time number two there. Obviously, Michael Thomas, one of the best, if not the best receivers in the game, but there's never really been a go-to second option over the last a uh, couple of seasons here for the Saints team. They continue to win despite of that. You add in a Mandy Sanders. You think that's going to help here. Alvin Kamara seems to be okay with his situation as well. This was a game I know that you kind of highlighted when the lines first came out, when we were talking, you know, a month and a half ago when all these lines dropped because you were saying, how in the hell are the Saints only, uh, you know, th- this type of favorite over this Bucks team that, again, is basically glued together here. Yeah, I had this one circled for all the reasons you guys already laid out. Uh, all the you know the steam, the hype around the box, inflating uh, their their value in the market. But after diving into it, I don't I don't love this matchup mm-hmm. for New Orleans, a team that didn't have a lot of success rushing the passer last season. They were among the luckier teams in the NFL with injuries and turnover margin, seven and one in one score games. Is this Saints team as good as we think they are in 2020, or is there positive variance from 2019 baked in here? Um, so I, yeah, I, I'm kind of off the Saints now. I, I, you know, the three and a half is, I, I would feel better about three, but I don't think it's ever going to get there, right? I would not think it gets to three, Brad. I can't imagine. I, I can't. Well, and if it does, I can't imagine it staying there for longer than a couple right. of minutes. Like I, I would, you would have to be pretty much right on top of it if you were going to try to get that three. What do you think, Brad? Um. Well, I, I was quite interested to see that the line didn't really move at all with this Mike Evans news. Mm-hmm. Um. I, you know, I thought it might tick up towards four, and it pretty it just didn't really move. So I wonder if he's announced in. Um, whether you might it might tick down to three. Um, you you would think the Bucks would be the more popular side as well. Um, you know you do sometimes see some, some funky line moves on Sundays. Kind of public money just fall, falls in and chases. You know the like following a sharp move or something. So I personally would bet the the Saints at three. I, I think they're you know solid everywhere. You want to be solid. Top two offensive line. Top five quarterback coverage. I don't, I don't really see what's what's where there's any weakness here, um, especially compared to so much continuity compared to the Bucks. Um, so yeah, I, I I think there's a chance we get three, and if if there was, I would bet it. Yeah, same here. So if this were to get to three, kind of like I'll I'll put in kind of an a, an official pick here that is that is a mythical pick because it it will have to get to a certain place. But yeah, if this hits three, this is definitely going to hit my account. Um, I, I think that there's a little bit of a little bit of hype here around this Bucks team, and I think I get it. I you bring in one of the great all times. I get it. You know, you want to, you, you're going to get some off season headlines for all of that. But I, I believe there's a little bit too much here. That is my play as well on this. Will be the Saints if this thing gets to three. Uh,